Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to provide a quick update on where we are with the battery electric uh, uh, vehicles and underground. Uh, well, in now in mining, uh, we're going into version three. Um, uh, version one and version two are very underground specific, and uh, we've changed the name now to in mining because surface has become a big uh, push. Um, not surprisingly, from the previous slide, a lot of our work is mirroring the results from that graph because business cases and usage data, um, there's all kinds of questions coming in. Thus far, we've had four formal meetings on this version three and where we're going to go with it. And there's also been some great discussion uh, in the community website back and forth and some questions. Um, so we're working right now um, on identifying what topics need to be updated and added. Um, the big push this one uh, is that the technology is changing so rapidly and there's new stuff coming in and there's lessons learned. Um, as there's more uh, electric vehicles operating underground, um, so really trying to harness all those lessons learned and the knowledge gained. Um, so if you haven't been involved so far and you do have firsthand knowledge of uh, battery electric or vehicles operating underground or access to it, uh, the group would love to have it because the more information we have, especially real world data, the better it is. Um, uh, obviously from the study you can see that uh, uh, many people feel this is the way to go um, and it's just trying to figure out how to do it economically product, uh, so it's productive and in a safe manner. Next slide, please. So broadly, as I mentioned, a lot of the comments that have come back have been questions about surface mining and some of the hybrids, um, such as, uh, I guess, uh, resurgence of tethered machines, um, trolley assist, as well as how to deal with um, the larger vehicles because the surface units can be so much larger than we utilize underground. Um, we already had a very good base from version two um, for the underground. So a lot of it's more contact development and flushing out such as the fire safety um, and other topics that were somewhat contentious. So we've kind of glazed over. Um, so now we're trying to, now the main content's been, uh, sorted. Now we're trying to take some of those uh, touchier subjects and provide some guidance and flush it out so that people can have a fuller understanding, as well as from conversations having with people in the mine and lessons learned, um, trying to refine the uh, vocabulary so everybody's using a common nomenclature and better explain some of the key points that people should understand trying to get into this. Um, next slide, please. As I already mentioned, fire suppression is a big one. Um, mine rescue, we've had a lot of things for how should first responders deal with the different chemical types. Um, so obviously we're still reaching out to experts and trying to compile the industry best practices we can there. Um, we're planning on updating some new chemistries that are coming on. Um, so if you have any knowledge of or experience with some of the, uh, I guess, current recently developed chemistries because um, the ones that were previously done were um, lithium ion phosphate and NMC are probably the two most common underground. Um, but we're trying to expand that to new ones and understand what the differences are as well as understand the integration for like autonomy mixed fleets between diesel and the hybrids and uh, some of the maintenance stuff as well and how uh, these things are actually performing underground, what's the availability, what's the, the change in skill set needed to be able to maintain these. Next slide, please. Some of the information that we're really looking for is the business case information. That's what everyone wants to know. How do I, how do we justify this moving forward? Uh, everybody on this call I think is well aware with uh, some of the benefits this can as well as some of the challenges. So it's really trying to bring the information together so that people can make the right decision for their operation and for OEMs to be able to design equipment that's actually usable by the, uh, by the mining companies. 
uh, some of the things that have come to light is environmental conditions. Um, they're more significant than originally thought, especially for portal mines or where they're or far north. So we're looking to figure out how to come up with guidelines for doing this on surface because it's one thing to be on, on surface for a, a little bit for a portal mine, but if you're a full open pit mine, um, it never gets a chance to get warm. So how are we gonna deal with that and all the energy required and the size? Next slide, please. So as I was saying, the underground, we have a very, very good foundation with the first two, um, but we are trying to flush it out. And the surface is kind of a new area. And uh, some of the conversation we've had is, how do we deal with some of this, like the trolley assist, because that ties over with some municipalities have regulations when you're attached to the grid, um, you have to meet a whole new set of guidelines. So trying to figure out how we're going to deal with these challenges and what information would be useful. Um, we have some very good uh, knowledgeable people in the group, so very excited to be part of it. Um, but definitely if you're, if you're not involved and you have some expertise or if you know of somebody, please get involved. That's kind of where we are thus far. Thank you, Paul. Are, th are there any questions for oh, him? Would you like, oh, sorry. There is a comment in the chat that I can read. Go ahead. I interrupted you. <laughs> From no, that's quite Ad all right. Jenny. Okay, <laughs> interesting results in the survey. Which topics are more interesting in this topic? Should we be able to answer those questions in the new uh, battery electric vehicles and mining report? Yes, I definitely agree with that. That's a, uh, the yeah. I was surprised the survey revolt results tied right into the kind of the key, key topics that had come out during the working group meeting when we had the. Uh, the Zoom open platforms, everybody's looking for those answers. So hopefully we'll be able to fight, provide uh, clarity in this uh, version three. Hey Paul, it's uh, Martin here from McLean. Um, so do you understand correctly that there's a, a working draft of this version being floated around within a smaller group or, or what's, what's sort of the, the status? Right now, Martin, it's more of a, a trying to consolidate all the comment, sort of the wish lists into, uh, into topics so that the, then subgroups can be formed to flush out the details. So it's really more still in the planning stages of what do we think we can uh, tackle in the timeline and with the resources available. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Paul? Uh, I just wanted to add something that uh, we plan on submitting uh, some material related to um, fire response and also uh, use of BEVs and gassy mines. And um, right now it's undergoing uh, a review at our agency. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some material to you uh, soon. Hi Paul, this is Leslie Watson. I have a question. Hi, thanks. On the surface aspect of this and tying into the grid, um, since the U.S. has like different zones and things are out differently, has that been some of the consideration? Um, the grid's managed differently in different areas of the U.S. and I don't know if that works the same way in other countries. Absolutely. And that's one of the challenges we're having is it is very regional. Um, like in Canada, we have CSA 421 which is the electrical code, but it doesn't apply to uh, vehicles as long as you're not tied to the vehicle. So for battery electric, only the charging side, um, the EVSE is kind of the gateway between what has to meet uh, CSA 421. And then uh, after that, it's more industry best practices. Um, but as soon as you have like a trolley assist or a tethered machine, now because you're tied directly to the grid, um, you have a whole other burden um, because 421 does state that you have to have an electrician work on it. Like there's a lot more regulatory burden there. 
Mm -hmm. where, so it's how do you deal with that for the different jurisdictions? Because this is a global document, not specific to a country. Right. I think that's, that's, that is going to be one of the, the challenges for the global document. But I think just some nod that there is that, that split and difference, I think, is good. The, uh, hey, Paul, this is uh, Rami uh, over here. So uh, with regard to the trolley and trolley assist, uh, there is, uh, I believe, an IEEE document as a standard for actually traction power station. And uh, traction power station may or may not be have regenerative back to the grid. They are mostly DC power, but I believe that standard uh, or the tie-in is the most commonly used in different municipality which have uh, those kind of services. Uh, what I found out uh, that most jurisdictions do not recognize those as a mine or as a separate railway. So, but the IEEE. I'm gonna dig that standard number, um, you know, I can't recall it right now, is the mostly used for that kind of uh, uh, applications. And um, in, in our case, we're gonna be, uh, the trolley will be as a charging only. So it's uh, basically a DC power supply. So that might be a, a kind of a way to tie it into the existing IEEE standard. That's fantastic, though. I mean, and yeah, if you could forward it uh, on to somebody, that'd be great to include in the in the group for review. Mm 